Hey everyone, Dr. Charlie Johnson here, physical therapist, and I just wanted to take a moment to share with you a simple system that I use with, I'd say, 95% of my patients to help them um, identify specific activities that they're doing throughout their daily lives um, that are perpetuating their problem. So just the other day, I was covering for a physical therapist, um, and I was working with a patient who had been there for probably uh, four to six weeks or so, and she had seen minimal improvement in her neck and shoulder pain. Um, and we just happened through talking um, to kind of come to the conclusion that she was sitting at her desk and using her iPad um, in a pretty poor posture. So she said to me, she said, hey, uh, Charlie, do you think that, you know, when I'm sitting at my desk, when I'm sitting on my couch and I'm looking at my iPad, do you think that has anything to do with my neck or my shoulder pain? And I said, well, yeah, of course. Um, and it was something that the other physical therapist had not picked up on. Um, and I was quite surprised they hadn't picked up on it. But um, I want to share with you a simple system that I use to help um, patients kind of see for themselves, take control of their own pain, um, and see for themselves some things that they might be able to modify throughout their daily, uh, you know, their daily lives to um, kind of help solve their own problems. So it puts a little bit of self-control in their hands. So um, as you can see here, I call this exercise a trouble tree. I don't know, I just made it up, call it whatever you'd like, but feel free to use this with your patients. So a lot of times in school we're taught, um, you know, to ask people obviously what aggravating, uh, what things aggravate their pain, what things make their pain better. Um, and, you know, we kind of put it in our own little head. But I am encouraging you to um, allow the patient, again, some self-efficacy, provide them with self some some self-control over their own symptoms and really lay this out for them. So this exercise called the trouble tree is a um, kind of a mind map that you can help walk the patient through and then you can actually photocopy it at the end of the evaluation or even the second or third treatment session when you get around to it to help them better understand what could be bothering them, um, what could be making their pain worse. So this way it's on paper and they have no question and it kind of actually, um, it seems so simple but when you do this with a patient, uh, really sets off a light bulb in their head as to uh, what could be causing their issue and they become more aware of it. So I'm just going to walk you through a simple example. Uh, I have a kind of an example here from a patient that I created today um, and I just wrote it down for us. So this is going to be a lady, um, an 85 year old female with neck pain um, and here are some of the things that after talking to her um, she discovered. So first things first at the top of the uh, trouble tree what I want you to write is I want you to write um, the patient's name, remember you're going to give this to them, the patient's name and, um, you know, so blank name and neck and arm pain or so-and-so's name and shoulder pain. Kind of make them own it. Let them know that it's their pain and that ultimately through doing this, you're going to give them control. So here it is. So trouble tree and let's just say, I don't know, let's just say Jane's neck and arm pain. Okay, so as in any mind map, you're gonna have a main topic. So again, when they write this, if you want, you have them write it. That might actually even be a bit better. So Jane's neck and arm pain, and from that central topic, they're going to start to branch. So, let me see here. So I don't run out of room. Okay. sloppy but I think you get the idea so first things first you're gonna help them try to identify the aggravating factors so you're gonna say you know let's talk about what types of things make your arm pain worse so we're gonna brainstorm some things so we can clearly identify what things you can avoid doing um, in order to kind of help yourself while you're at home so first things first you're gonna create main branches from this trouble tree so um, in this example, the first thing she said was reading. And I said, very open-ended question, uh, I said, well, tell me more. So what about reading seems to bother your neck and arm pain? She said, hmm. And, you know, don't interject. Give them a second to think. She said, well... <clears throat> Uh, 
she said, Charlie, when I work on my tablet, I have more neck and arm pain than when I read a book. Okay, so um, right there she said, hmm, that's interesting. So yeah, I definitely have more pain when I read on my tablet versus when I read on a book. So I said, okay, tell me more. So what about specifically reading on a tablet do you feel creates more neck and arm pain for you than if you read a book? And she said, Okay, so hopefully you can read this, but she said, well, Charlie, when I'm on my tablet, it seems to be a smaller font, okay? I'm usually reading it on my couch at night in front of the TV as my husband's watching TV, and I'm always looking down. Okay, so right there, the patient already has identified some specific things that aggravate their condition, and then you might ask them, okay, so it seems like when you're on your tablet, you have more discomfort in your neck and your arm. Seems as though you feel as though the smaller font makes you look down more, which might seem to aggravate things, and you're usually doing it on the couch. Okay, well, interesting. So what happens if you sit in a hard chair? You sit at your table and you read your, you read your tablet or you, know, you surf your tablet. She says, I never really thought about that. I'll give that a try. So right there, you've already empowered the patient to take control of their own pain and help them identify some aggravating factors, okay? So that's reading. I have a few on here, but I'll just go through one more. Um, so remember, the whole time you're walking them through this. So the next thing um, that I say was, okay, so... We know reading seems to bother your symptoms. What else do you think? So walk me through your day-to-day -day activities. And she said, well, you know, at night, sleeping really bothers me. I said, okay, great, sleeping. So let's break that out. What about sleeping do you feel aggravates your symptoms? And if they're still not sure, say, well, what, what position do you typically sleep in? And they kind of, you know, their brain starts going on, uh, what about sleeping seems to bother them? So she said... She said, Charlie, when I sleep in my bed, I'm okay. But when I sleep in my recliner, because my husband stays up late watching television, that's when I have an issue. Also, when I sleep on my back, when I'm on the recliner, I seem to have more of an issue. Okay, so big picture here. I don't have to go through it all. I hope you get it by this point, and I think it'll be useful for you in your practice. But um, then you kind of summarize. Okay, so Miss So-and-so, what I hear you saying is that you know, we have these big activities. So we've got reading, we've got sleeping. It seems as though there's some postural component because when you're on a couch or when you're in the recliner, both are very soft surfaces, it seems to aggravate your symptoms. Does that sound correct? They'd say, yeah, it sounds, it sounds good. Okay. Again, looking down seems to aggravate. Okay. Now as a physical therapist, not only you're helping them modify their activities at home and helping them, empowering them to come to that realization, but... Um, you might be changing things such as the font size on their, their uh, tablet. So um, this goes really, really in depth, but it's kind of a nice way to um, use open communication, um, help the patient realize what things bother them, uh, and instill some kind of self-control um, with regards to their discomfort, in this case, neck and arm pain, um, and really... Um, give them some self-efficacy and feel as though they have the power to control their symptoms um, when they understand what aggravates it. So this is a nice way to uh, increase awareness of whoever you may be dealing with, with whatever pathology um, when it comes to um, aggravating factors. So again, it's called the trouble tree, call it whatever you may like. Hopefully it helps you out in your practice. If you have any more questions or other systems that you use with your very own patients um, to help them kind of um, gain some control in their life and feel a bit better, um, then feel free to like or comment below. So thanks so much, everyone. Hopefully this is helpful.